Good morning, St. John's, morning. Right here and abroad. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our celebration of Holy Eucharist on this first Sunday in Lent. Uh, our worship begins with hymn number 143, The Glory of These 40 Days.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray together the Decalogue. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. 
The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 32, which is found in your handout. We will read Psalm 32 responsively by verse. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and then he gave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Our second lesson is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to the condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After Jesus was baptized, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. They speak in the name of the one God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The traditional gospel reading for today, for as far back as uh, we have any uh, lectionaries, is this gospel from today, that Jesus is tempted out in the wilderness. So if you recall, uh, what had just happened prior to this was that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, And then this voice from heaven was heard that Jesus was his beloved son. Then this dove, or if you prefer, rock pigeon, drove Jesus out into the wilderness. Now the wilderness carries a lot of weight for us culturally, so I want to clarify what's going on here. If I said to you, uh, once upon a time, uh, two young children were lost in the wilderness, you know that there, something bad's going to happen. You, know, you just know that. That's a use of wilderness um, in our culture. There is an opposite, kind of very romantic view of the wilderness. That uh, you know, I was uh, hiking my way through Yellowstone, and with all of God's creatures around me, I could feel the presence of the Lord. So it could be that kind of wilderness, that, uh, which is all good and positive and procreation and all that. Wilderness isn't really doing either of those things in this case. Wilderness here rec- is, is a new beginning. We are meant to remember the exodus with this wilderness. So Moses... Uh, with, the, with uh, working uh, through the grace of God, is able to lead the Israelites uh, across the sea and then into the wilderness where they will start anew. So it's, that's what's meant here as wilderness. And Jesus is taking on the role of Israel. So often in Matthew, Jesus is seen as like a second Moses. But here it's even broader. He's taking on all of Israel. He is representing Israel in this new chance, this this wilderness journey which is going to start something fresh and it's going to work out better this time. So if you recall from the Exodus experience, 
the Israelites had all of these wonderful experiences with God, right? Being saved from the Egyptians, uh, and, and, and quite literally when the chariots were barreling down into them. But when they get to the wilderness, they immediately start complaining. And they say that they're hungry. Okay, well, if that's where it was left, I, th I think God would have been okay with that. But that's not where they left it. They started complaining and wishing that they were back in Egypt. They re were rejecting God's plan for them. And you probably remember the line, were there not enough graves in Egypt that you had to drag us all the way out here to die in the wilderness? God sends manna from heaven, of course, because God was going to make sure that they were going to be taken care of. In our story today, Jesus has been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's hungry. And so Satan comes over and is like, well, just, you know, make, make the stones bread. You know, God, God created bread before. Come on, you should, you're the son of God, right? You should be able to do that. And Jesus says no. Because God's plan is not all about his personal comfort. He says that people live by more than bread alone. But, and we are to focus on the very words that come out of the mouth of God. Then Satan brings them up to the top of the Temple Mount with the Kidron Valley down below. And he's like, no, oh, just throw yourself off. Because God's not going to let you die. Your, the angels are going to come and swoop you up. This is not dissimilar, again, from the wilderness in Egypt, or outside of Egypt, when the Israelites were wandering around and they got thirsty. They wanted water, but they wanted more than that. They wanted a bit of a show. They wanted uh, Moses to do something miraculous. And Moses takes his staff and knocks it twice against the stone at Meribah and water pours out. They put God to the test. They didn't have faith that they would be taken care of. And here, Jesus says, no, I'm not going to put God to the test. Satan then brings him up to a high mountain and says, all of this can be yours. Just fall down and worship me. What Satan is saying here is, Jesus, I have a better plan than God's plan. I will just make you king of kings. You can skip right over all this part about suffering, uh, being betrayed by a friend, being abandoned by friends, uh, dying on the cross, Let, I, I'll have you skip all of that. And you can just go right to the end. And all you have to do is worship me. You have to say that I had a better plan than God had. And Jesus rejects that. And Satan leaves. And then the angels minister to Jesus. Because, of course, Satan was right that the angels were going to be there for, for Jesus. But it was not going to be because it was at, at a time convenient to Jesus. It was going to be in God's time. So Jesus decides to follow God's plan. Hold to that. Not reject it and replace it by his own plan. So how does this work in our real world, right? The world that we walk around in. Well, we have a great example of how this can work going back to one of the earliest stories uh, ever told. And uh, that is an Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve are given a plan by God. They reject that plan. They create their own plan. And they eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Before they even get caught, they're not in trouble yet. Before they even get caught, 
they look around and they're ashamed of their bodies and they quickly cover up. So as soon as God's plan is rejected, immediately the two that reject it are ashamed, ashamed of their bodies. And we see body shaming all over the place these days. Certainly body shaming for women has been common uh, in advertising campaigns you know, throughout my whole life. Uh, if you don't buy this makeup, you're not going to look like Cindy Crawford. If you would just buy it, you'd look like Cindy Crawford. So what's wrong with you? Um, if uh, you, you follow this, this diet plan, uh, you're going to look like Giselle, you know? And if, if something happens with that, it's your fault. You know, you, you just need to, to buy the things I'm going to sell you. And then you will not look the way you do, you know? You'll, you'll be better. You shouldn't, you know, you, you're, you should be ashamed. And in the last 20 years, uh, because we are uh, more inclusive even at bad things, uh, we now have body shaming of boys and men. Um, well, I remember my, my favorite uh, actors uh, when, when I was a kid, uh, you know, people uh, in, in big action movies like, uh, you know, Harrison Ford or, or somebody like, uh, uh, um, uh, who am I thinking, like Bruce Willis in Die Hard or something. It's like they all had good daddy tongues, you know, That's, uh, that, that was just part of the culture. It was okay to do that. Uh, nowadays, you're not allowed to do that. So um, we have uh, people like Thor, you know? So we have uh, Chris Helmsworth, not a bad looking guy, not, nothing negative to say about him, uh, but he, uh, he, he plays Thor. And of course, he's, when he plays Thor, he's got like you know, zero body fat and, uh, you know, and he looks enormous. Um, and he came out not too long ago and said how, how this diet and exercise program he has to follow to look that way makes him miserable, and he hates it. And, uh, and he says it's not really a healthy way uh, to, to live your life. It's, it's too extreme. So, uh, so I decided, as a bit of an experiment, I, I put into Google um, you know, some of these words, that, uh, that this, um, this way of living uh, that he's been doing makes him miserable. So what does Google come up with for us? All right, it says, uh, Chris Helmsworth diet and exercise program, it is insanely awesome. Four, workout routine. The workout routine and diet plan that will make you great. Chris Helmsworth workout and training secrets. Chris Helmsworth workout and diet plan. Videos of Chris Helmsworth. Uh, tired of your workout routine? Try this. Chris Helmsworth shared his secrets to motivation within the workout program. What is Chris Helmsworth workout routine set for set explanations? Uh, then a little advertisement, where would we be without that? Uh, Dwayne Johnson's real workout, train like the rock. Uh, Chris Helmsworth workout and diet plan trading guide. Uh, there's a book about that. And uh, the four diet and workout plan, the routine that will make you great. Uh, the godlike workout program. Chris Helmworth's 10 minute body weight circuit workout that will change your life. You know. So this is what came back when I asked Google about how miserable all of this made him. The quote never shows up. <laughs> There's nothing even remotely critical about it. Instead, it is just page after page of something trying, you know, of, of uh, folks trying to sell you something and convince you that this is what you have to do in order to not be ashamed, you know, of, of your body. Um, this is, this is sin. It, it is one of the earliest manifestations of it. Is, and I'm not saying that in an ideal world, God really wants us all to live in a nudist colony. Now, I am a northerner, I have value clothes, you know, it's cold out there. That's not the point. It's 
the issue of shame, that we should have something to be ashamed of. And this came about because of the rejection of God's plan. God did not want us to be ashamed. God said that we are magnificently made. God said that, that we are made good. And it's only when we set aside that plan where we said, oh, I have to be ashamed of myself. That was not God's original plan. So during Lent, it's a great time for us to focus on what is God's plan? What is God calling us to do? Because if, we, if our plan can line up with God's call for us, then we invite a lot less sin and judgment into our lives. That makes us miserable. And we can find the joy of the Lord. It doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to exercise. But we're not supposed to go crazy about this in, 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 our, in the judgment of ourselves. And it works in so many different areas of our lives, too. God loves us. God wants us to have the joy of the Lord in our hearts and not be so self-critical, which is fed into this whole idea that we just need to buy one more thing to bring us happiness. It doesn't work. Instead, let us open our hearts to the love of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God not made of one being with the Father, to whom all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the source of our sustenance, saying, God, our shelter, preserve us from trouble. Great God, you have called your people to worship and serve you alone. Instill in us such a singleness of heart that we may perfectly trust you to meet our needs. We give thanks for the following people celebrating birthdays this week. Jen Kaufman, Russell Lamende, Judith Taylor, Rich Harding, Max Toth, Oren Bartle. We also pray for those who have departed this life, especially Harriet and William Nutland and Robert and Lily Nutland, in whose name the altar flowers have been given. God, our shelter, preserve us from trouble. Great God, we live among many temptations. Free the people of this nation 
and this world from all sinful desires that draw us from the love of God. God, our shelter, preserve us from trouble. Great creator, you have surrounded us with blessings. You provide enough to meet our needs. And yet, we strive and scheme for more, always more. Have mercy on us. God, our shelter, preserve us from trouble. O oh Lord, we pray for those bound by addiction, those for whom temptation is a constant threat. Set the captives free. Satisfy their cravings with abundant grace. God, our shelter, preserve us from trouble. Be with the sick and suffering, great healer. Be for them in a shelter place. Preserve them from trouble. Surround them with shouts of deliverance. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. We pray for Donjin, Beth, Sarah, Julia, Lindsay, Matt, Max, Weston, Elliot, Kurt, Marge, Aiden, Brian, Michael, Tom, Bill, Greg, Mark, Jackson, the victims and survivors of Turkey Syria earthquake, Claudette, Velma, Susan, Ed and Mary, Amy, Sue, Phyllis, Jaden, Ellen, Clyde, Matt, Wendy, Noah, Ben, Gina, Lewis, Kelsey, Callie, Paul, Jack, Roger, Mark, Maya, Steve, Linda, Chris, Sarah, Nina, Karen, Deb, Susan, Betsy, Jenny, Jim, Bill, Olivia and Dan Welpley in Loss of Laurie, Anne and John, Penny and John, Edward, Maureen, Fred, Fred Joe, Jimmy and Rosalind Carter, Jen, Kelly, Betsy, Gail, Shirley, Sean, Chad, and Nancy. We pray for the special concerns of this congregation. For the people of Ukraine, St. Vincent's School in Port-au-Prince, for the parishioners in Vestry of St. Mary's in Manchester, for the Cheyenne River Lakota Indian Reservation, for the preservation and protection of God's creation and creatures, for the health of our veterans and their families, and for the sick and homebound of our parish, for the protection of those American men and women in harm's way. God, our shelter, preserve us from trouble. Through the righteousness of Jesus our Christ, give new and abundant life to all. Justify the dying and the dead. Keep them in your strong hands forever. God, our shelter, preserve us from trouble. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, church. Good morning. You may be seated. A few uh, brief announcements. Uh, it is uh, parochial report time. Uh, for those of you uh, uh, who are unfamiliar, this is a report that uh, the National Church uh, asks us to do. Um, and they have revised it to make it longer this year. 
Great. Um, and one of the things that they want us to do is to report um, uh, some more ethnic information, uh, uh, the ethnicity of, of the congregation. So uh, you were probably sent an email of this. I know that we've had uh, some folks uh, respond through the email. You can do that uh, if you'd like. If you'd prefer a paper copy, we have uh, paper copies uh, available in the narthex. It's anonymous. You just check a box or whatever, you know, the number uh, in a family, and then you just leave it back there, and we will calculate that and report it to the national church. Um, our Lenten uh, liturgies have begun. Our Stations of the Cross begins uh, this Friday. Uh, we'll have stations at noon and at 6.30. Uh, our Lenten series continues on Thursday evening at 6 o'clock. We have a soup supper in the Lower Parish Hall. We have discussion, and then we conclude with a brief Eucharist. Uh, our discussion uh, this year uh, is based on uh, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and if you have some interest and we're not able to make it this past Thursday, just come see me. I'd be happy to, uh, to catch you up. Also, it's a wonderful uh, chance to get to know some of our sisters and brothers from St. Mary's who have joined us uh, uh, for the Lenten series. So I do encourage you to come. Uh, Undy Sunday uh, is going to be coming up uh, at the end of the month. Um, we, next week is going to be uh, Scout Sunday. Uh, so we invite all the scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, uh, to come in, uh, and we will uh, honor them. Uh, they, they're going to bring in uh, the flags, and we're going to say a scout prayer together, and they'll help uh, you all find your seats and everything. They'll be decked out in their uniforms. It's uh, a, a wonderful way of supporting one another. The scouts do a whole lot for our community and, uh, and bring uh, life here to St. John's. St. John's for many, many years uh, has been a big supporter of scouting. Uh, so that will be next week. We have a St. Patrick's Day cranbe uh, cranberry, uh, corned beef uh, dinner, uh, no cranberry, uh, that, uh, that will be on Saturday, uh, March 18th, and, uh, and tickets uh, are available. It's going to be so much fun. I'm so glad that we get to do these kinds of things again. So we have not had the uh, corned beef dinner for the last few years, so uh, it will be back, and we're going to have great fun. Uh, I mentioned last week that I thought I would be able to share with you um, uh, the person that we hired to be our next music minister. That did, in fact, happen, so, uh, so it's, it's very exciting. So uh, Zoe Vandermeer uh, is going to be uh, the next music minister here at St. John's. She is going to begin uh, Lent 4, which is Rose Sunday, which is a, a nice day to start, I think. Um, she is a very talented musician. She plays the piano, the organ, and the harp. And uh, certainly the harp is so beautiful, especially at Christmas time. Looking forward to that. She is a opera-trained uh, soprano and uh, has offered to do a concert, um, which will be really enjoyable, I think, too, uh, a few months from now. Um, she has a lot of experience working with choirs, and, uh, and we, we look forward to, uh, to her coming and working with our choir, and hopefully a, a few other folks may want to join our choir. Um, she's not afraid of technology. She gives MP3 homework, which she's working on now for all of you, so that's going to be great. Uh, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm very excited. She's very excited. I look forward to, uh, to the time when she, she'll be with us. Um, I know you'll appreciate her. Uh, before we get to skip, any other announcements? Yes, that's all. Just, just um, hoping for a quick round of applause. I thought the search for the music minister was fantastic, and we have one now. And I just think all those people that work with uh, all the candidates should uh, deserve a round of applause, if you don't mind. Good morning. Good morning. 
I'd like to speak to you for briefly, very briefly, just for a few minutes, about stewardship. Um, I'd like to start off uh, reminding you of the, the words of the dismissal that we say every Sunday before we leave here. Um, and I excerpt it. Um, and now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. Um, in those words, uh, those words sum up my own feelings about stewardship, uh, what has driven my own stewardship journey. Um, what has made it so important for me over the years to support St. John's, uh, my faith community, with time, talent, and treasure uh, is the fact that every Sunday after the service, we depart here. And so many of you, all of you, uh, do so much within, after we depart, so you do so much within this faith community of St. John's, within our respective communities that we come from, uh, within the state of Connecticut, within the other parts of the country, and even other parts of the world, in terms of your doing your part for Christian mission and ministry to bring the word of Christ to people that are less fortunate than we are um, with all of the ministries that we, uh, together as a parish and we individually support currently and have in the past. Uh, and I find that so incredibly important that we are able to do that. And we do that as part of this faith community of St. John's. Um, the other evening, uh, Donna and I were speaking with a, uh, a friend of hers uh, about the importance of living into God and Christ uh, and having that in our lives. And he put it in very, very simple terms. Birds of a feather flock together. And what he meant by that was um, we gather together as a faith community and we are all so much alike because we are all driven to support Christian ministries and bring the word uh, to the less fortunate of the world. To me, it is, absolute, it is of absolute paramount importance uh, for me to, again, support this faith community uh, with my time, talent, and treasure to do my part to help St. John's continue to be able to do that, again, individually and as a parish. Um, I would uh, urge all of you to, to spend the next several weeks um, as we approach our pledge in gathering to think about that and think about how this aspect of your faith lives deserves support. Um, and I will also take the opportunity to put in yet another pitch. Um, if over the next several weeks, um, any of you are, uh, feel moved to, uh, to share your own thoughts uh, about your personal stewardship journeys with the rest of the parish, um, please contact me after the service uh, or give me a call. You can reach me by email. I'm in the parish directory. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Steve. The last bit of good news uh, is with uh, coronavirus levels at a pretty uh, low, moderate rate and with the flu levels actually way down, uh, we've decided that uh, Lent is a good time to start using the common cup. So for those of you um, who don't bounce back between other services, I know we've been doing it at the 8 o'clock uh, most of the year and, and, uh, and we started back in the fall. Uh, for weekday services, uh, but this will be new for, for, for 10 o'clockers. Uh, the way we have been doing it, which has worked out pretty well, is, uh, is I'll, I'll remain here and, and offer the host 
So I have both the gluten-free and the, uh, the, the regular hosts. Um, so just let me know if you need a, a, glu a gluten-free wafer, and I will provide that. And our Eucharist minister uh, will be off to the side uh, where you can receive the common cup if you so choose. Um, as I uh, have reminded you in the past, in Episcopal uh, theology, following Lutheran, Roman Catholic, Methodist practice, you receive in one kind, you receive in both kinds. So if this is something you'd rather not do, that is perfectly fine. Uh, you're, you're, you're in great shape. Uh, but if you would like to participate, uh, then you, you may do so. Um, so either uh, stand in line right next to me to receive the cup, or you could just come around and return to your seat. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. 
he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night before he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see how gracious the Lord is.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries 
that we are living members of the body of your Son, the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
go forth in the name of Christ.